Hey everyone, this is Ian from Big Rock ADV, and today I want to talk about kind of an elephant in the room for adventure riding. Why is there such a huge price difference in some of the gear out there? And in specific today, I want to give you a review of the Klein Badlands jacket. This is the current version. I guess they don't call it the Pro now, it's just back to the Badlands. But this is the current version they're selling, and I bought this in 2019, same one they're selling in 2020. They have a bunch of different colors now too. So I want to give you a review of this jacket in particular, but I also want to talk about like, why is this a thousand dollar jacket? Um, is this just a showing off thing? Is this just a status thing for like BMW riders to go hang out at the cafe? Or is it like legitimate? And is the protection that you get and some of the features you get in any way justifying this kind of huge price tag? So let's talk about this honestly and see where it gets us. Okay, so what led me to arrive on this Klein Badlands jacket? So talk about some of the jackets I've had before and some of the gear. So probably like most of you, I've had, you know, a ton of different gear over the years. When I started riding a long time ago, when I was, uh, I guess, in, in high school and in college, I couldn't afford any sort of nice gear. So I had, you know, whatever, Joe Rocket, um, Tour Master, and not saying those were bad, but like those are the things I had. And I would, I would have the same, you know, cheap jacket for five or 10 years because that's the budget you have when you're in college or, or whatever. Um, and then over the years, my riding progressed and I, you know, I had a bigger budget to do these things. So um, I've had a lot of jackets from Revit in particular. Uh, I've had a lot of Olympia products. And I've uh, only in the past few years have I started to go more towards the climb products. And um, so my appreciation for the nicer gear is, I think, a lot more advanced than it used to be. So I didn't used to really understand why some jackets cost so much more. I didn't see the advantage. But nowadays I do a little bit. So let's talk about some of the good things about the Badlands and why I chose it. So the Badlands, the first thing you, you're looking at when you see this jacket is, okay, it's Gore-Tex Pro, right? It says right there. And the Pro is a higher, is their highest level, or I don't know, it's a higher level than regular Gore-Tex of waterproof certification. So you can watch some other reviews to get the details of that. But what it means is that a Gore-Tex uh, has to certify this for a very high level of waterproofability, whether that's a high pressure spray or how that ever works. I don't know the technical part of it, but I do know that the Pro is a, is a higher rated membrane than the regular uh, lower end Gore-Tex membrane. It costs a lot to certify, it costs a lot for Climb to license this product, and you're seeing that reflected into that thousand dollar price tag. The reason I like Gore-Tex is I find it breathes fairly well for a waterproof shell. I do like to have a waterproof shell this time of year when it's when it's raining and snowing and things like that and cold um, because you don't have to be taking taking in and out those inner liners, those they call them uh, drop-in liners or liner to drop, whatever uh, they're calling them now. You don't have to be taking your jacket off, pull out the inner liner and then put the jacket back on. Also, those liners tend to be really sweaty if you've noticed that. With the Gore-Tex, you don't get as much of that sweating and sort of clammy feeling because it's able to release more moisture than some of the other liners. But there are other good waterproof membranes out there, so do your research. The other things I like about it, um, I'll put some photos here, but the armor in this jacket is pretty incredible. It has some of the best armor, or maybe the best armor in a motorcycle jacket you can buy for an adventure jacket or off-road or street. I don't know about the super track stuff, like what the track racers use for sport bikes. That's a whole nother ball game, I don't know that. But for this kind of thing, this armor is, is, is amazing. Uh, it's, it's, I'll put the name here, it's, uh, it's ventilated. The panel, the, the coverage is, is tremendous. It fits your body really well. It's not stiff, so like on a cold day like this, it's still pliable. It's like 40 degrees here and it's still pliable, so it doesn't stiffen up. Um, the armor is excellent and it comes with all of it included. It even comes with, it even comes with armor in the chest. I like the chest armor because in the old days, you know, if you wanted to protect your chest area from rocks coming up or something, if you ride with your buddies off-road, you'd have to put on a chest protector underneath or wear one of those pressure suits. I have one of those Liat uh, pressure suits, but it's kind of a pain because you've got to wear that like kind of over just a thin base layer, and then you've got to put stuff on top of it. This has all my armor, including the chest armor included, and the chest armor is even ventilated, so I like that. Um, so we've talked about the waterproofing, we've talked about the armor, the, the construction of the shell, they use this stuff called super fabric and you know go look up the technical part of it but I know it's incredibly abrasion resistant like really really abrasion resistant I mean overall I guess what I would say is that this jacket is just bomb proof the construction of it you feel like you could be run over by a tank and probably survive it truly is like solid feeling it's heavy um, 
but the, w the way they've dealt with the weight is that it has a kidney belt. And when you wear the kidney belt, it somehow helps support the weight of the jacket. It also helps suck my stomach fat in, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. But it's nice to kind of suck in your fat a little bit, and then, you know, uh, the kidney belt takes some of the weight off the jacket. Uh, the venting on the jacket, it has vents. It has like, I don't know, a total of 15 vents or 17 vents or something. Um, front and back of the forearm, the sleeves, you know, four on the chest, two in the back. Um, it's got all sorts of vents, and it actually vents pretty well. If you, if you can, you know, if you don't have like a huge windshield or something blocking the wind or you stand up, you get pretty good airflow through it. And I think it's good up to about, you know, 85 degrees maybe. Past like 85 degrees, you really should be thinking about more of a mesh jacket or ventilator jacket. Although you could get by in this, and I have friends who ride in these in hot weather, and they seem to do okay. In the cold weather, it's great. You can put a, I just wear a heated vest liner underneath and plug it into my bike, and that's all you ever need in the cold weather. This keeps the wind off and keeps the rain off. So we've talked about what I like. I like the armor, I like the waterproof, I like the construction, the venting's pretty good. So what are the downsides of it? Um, well, price being the big one, obviously, but we'll talk about that. But the other, th there are downsides to it. The jacket is very, very heavy and very crunchy material. And when you, when you wear it, you feel like kind of a little bit constricted because it's kind of crunchy and, and rough, if that makes any sense. Like, it feels a little bit constricting. It also, Climb has kind of a weird cut. Um, it's kind of a little bit too bulky for me, like in the, in the stomach and chest. Um, this is a size medium, and normally in most jackets, I'm like a large. And so I, but I had to go down to the medium. It fits a little weird, but it does, it does fit me. Um, but it, it, it's not perfect. I wish they would, like for me, a Revit sizing works better, but I'm more of a European build. So, you know, take, take it with a grain of salt and try in the jacket yourself. Um, let's just get to it and talk about the price. So is this jacket worth the MSRP? Well, it might be. The reason I say that is, if you get 10, 15, 20 years out of the jacket and it maintains its waterproofing and maintains its protection over those years, then I think you got a good deal if you look, kind of look at that cost spread out over those years. Also, if the jacket fits you well, if it fits your purpose of riding, if it protects you uh, in, your, in your, any accidents you have, which people well, then you should replace it if you have an accident. But um, if it's a long lasting jacket, which I feel that it will be probably, but I can't tell you because I haven't had it for 10 years, then it's probably worth a thousand dollars. To be honest with you, I don't. So I don't have any affiliation with Climb or any manufacturer or even or any of the resellers like Revzilla. I have no affiliation. But I got about 25 or 30 percent off this jacket from sticker price because when I bought my GS, they offered that to me at the dealer. So I took them up on it and bought. Actually, bought the Badlands jacket and I bought a pair of uh, Carlsbad pants that are also Gore-Tex. And I'll do a review of the Carlsbad later. I've also had the Carlsbad jacket. I'll do a separate review comparing this to the Carlsbad. But in, in short, <coughs> sorry, in short, the Carlsbad is, is lighter. It's not as crunchy. Um, it doesn't have as good of armor, but it feels more mobile. And honestly, in a lot of ways, I, I kind of prefer the Carlsbad um, for adventure and off-road riding for more of a dual sport jacket, if that makes sense. But on the street, I really do like having the real heavy duty protection of the Badlands. Um, also, you're getting upgrading to the Gore-Tex Pro. It has more vents. Uh, the armor is better. So, you know, it's give and take. Go to your dealer, try them on, and if possible, try to support your dealer or your local motorcycle shop and buy one from them. Um, buying online is convenient, but, you know, you can't try it on and shipping it back and forth and things like that. So, I guess my conclusion is um, I'll come back later on with more of a long term review of the Badlands, but I do like it. Um, the reason I have it is it's like my fall, winter, spring jacket. I live in the mountains where it, where it rains quite a bit and it's fairly cold a lot of the year. Um, so this works for me. But I am in California and we do get hot weather. So probably I'll have this jacket and in the spring I'll be looking to buy a ventilated jacket. I've had a climb induction in the past, which was really, really good. And I might just get another one of those. I shouldn't have sold it. But I'm also thinking about trying the Revit um, Cayenne Pro, their ventilator jacket, because that looks like a really nice jacket. So anyway, probably for yeah, above 90 degrees, get a ventilator jacket. Um, so I hope this review was helpful on the Badlands. It, it is a good jacket. Is it worth it to you? You're going to have to decide for yourself. Go in and try it on compared to some other products. See if the Gore-Tex and the better armor and sort of the super fabric and the construction and protection is worth it to you. Um, there's a lot of other expensive jackets now out there too. I mean, they're not cheap. Um, but in general, 
Are you getting more with the more expensive gear? I would say yes, in general you are, and you should consider investing more for the long term to have a better protective garment. One that doesn't rip out the seams, one that doesn't fail in a crash, one that doesn't sweat, and so forth. So consider it, but it's not going to be for everyone. Um, also probably get like a high-vis color. I got this color because it was the last one they had, and I got such a screaming deal on it. Um, anyway, we'll see you next time.